So what Jim and I did, because I was desperate to see how do other people use their money? Do they have the same problem? So together we went out and interviewed lots of people, men and women, and we were filled with how they used their money. I wanted to see, did they connect it to God? Was there a God connection? And what happened? Out of that, a book was born. This is the book. I had no idea I would sing this. <laughs> but since you're so friendly, I'll take it away. This is the book. And what's wonderful about this book is that it leads you to your own story. All of us have a money story. But when you read some of these women's stories, you'll see where you might be trapped caught in something, can't get out, have anxieties, or have joy. You can see how you might relate to somebody who's a wisdom woman. I have six wisdom women in here. So the book was born, and Jim and I were born with it. Oh, a few examples to show you how people have different attitudes. It was my own mother. My own mother who said when my dad passed, and she said, she practically shouted, honey, the Arabic community thinks I'm somebody. Now that she had money, it was like a step up in esteem. You know what that's like when we get a better job, a higher raise. We feel better about ourselves. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. It might not be vital to who you are, but we live in a culture that gives that a lot of approbation. It was another young girl. She said, I hate money. I wish it weren't here. She worked at Burger King, felt like it was controlling her. And then there was a hospital administrator at one of the workshops, one of my first workshops, and she said proudly, I love money. <laughs> and we all kind of looked at her. Boy, she was brave to say that. I had never, I couldn't say that then. I can say it now because I see the value. So I started reading everything that I could about money. And I read 10 minutes. Good, thank you. Hurry it up, Adele. <laughs> so, so I read everything I could about money. And Jacob Needleman's book, Money and the Meaning of Life, said, it's not that you consider money too important. It's that you don't consider it important enough. It plays a huge role in our life. And then I also found Father Ed Hayes, the writer, the Catholic writer, who had called money back in the 70s a sacrament. Oh, because you don't know how nervous I was to give it this title. Mm -hmm. I thought I'll be kicked out of the, con out of the convent, out of the, <laughs> out of the church. Now I asked somebody, how do I call it a sacrament? I asked somebody to be a demonstrator for me. There she is, come up. <laughs> she owns a bookshop, we're pretending. A gift shop and a bookshop. And so I want to buy something from her. And this is how I want you to know how I have come to this awareness that my, aren't we twins? See our habits? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a habit, isn't, isn't it? it? So we came to get, so we, what we do, and this is what I want you to be more conscious, the conscious, the connection. She has something that I want in the shop. I come with my goodwill and with my money, money being a part of me. I give her the money, and she gives me a part of herself, something that's in her store that means something to her and her business, and I take it. And in that moment of exchange, this is vital, guys, and I hope you get it, that in that moment of exchange, when I give her something and she gives me back some, we are linked. We are bonded. We have made a sacred moment because she's in good faith, I'm in good faith. Thank you, Mary. Mary. You can keep the dollar. All right, I'll keep the dollar. <laughs> but the Buddhists say that all contracts are spiritual. So they see it in the light of goodness. And I love the story of the Good Samaritan. We always think about him, you know, he was the outcast, and he comes along and he picks up the guy after the priest and the uh, didn't. But what's amazing about him is he says to the innkeeper, I'll pay, here's the money, and when I'm coming back, if I owe you, I'll pay. I give you something of myself for this poor man. I make sacred 
that money. That's when money becomes sacramental. It becomes very deep. It, beco it makes God present. And Jesus knew that. Of course, Jesus was pretty smart himself. <laughs> Let's look at the little C. These are my saints. Most of you know them. This is Ellsberg, Catholic Ellsberg. Maybe you've got the book. And he talks about all the people, you know, Dorothy Day, Martin Luther King. Uh, name one. I bet it's in here. Name one. Seton. Who? Elizabeth Seton. Elizabeth Seton. Of course she's here. And then all those guys that did wonderful work, Mother Teresa. And if I have time, here's a sidebar. I'm getting a little nervous here. I better hurry up. We were... Oh, how sweet it is. Did you hear that? Yeah. Well, we all came here to hear you. Oh, I love it. Say some more. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the sidebar is Jim and I, just the other day, we watched a tape. And in it, Wayne Dyer told this story about Mother Teresa. And he said she came to New Orleans, and she was there on a talk show host. Now, he's an Irish Catholic. He was thrilled, Mother Teresa, on my program. So he said to her, Mother, what can I do for you? She says, nothing. I just came to be with the homeless. But Mother, there must be something. I have so many people listening. We want to help you. What can we do? Nothing. I came to be here with the homeless. Mother, please, let me do something for you. She said, all right. Get up tomorrow morning at 4 o'clock and go out into the street and find a homeless person and let them know they're not alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus practiced the small C, the conscious, caring C. You know the millions of stories. He stopped to tell stories. He told Pilate the truth when it could get him into trouble. He was very clear. The women at the well, the woman, you know, the outcast again, the Samaritan. One of Jesus' own people, which I love this, and I, you know, had to stick it in, Eddie Hellison. She's in here. How many of you have heard of Eddie Hellison? Oh, great, I get to tell you something you've never heard before. <laughs> she was a young Jewish woman, Dutch Jew, living in the Netherlands when Hitler was on the rampage. She knew that destruction was coming. She started a diary at 27 years old, finished it at 29. Her last words were, we went to the camp singing. This is what she wrote in her diary. Oh, I just could had to make it very short, but someday, if you want, read An Interrupted Life. That's now the diary of Eddie Hellison, young Jewish woman. I live here and now, this minute, this day, to the full, and life is worth living. And if I knew I was going to die tomorrow, then I would say, it's a great shame, but it's been good while it lasted. We carry everything within us, and we have to take everything that comes to grow day by day, even with the likelihood of destruction staring me in the face. In the labor camp, I should lie down and die and still not find life unfair. And if God does not help me to go on, I shall have to help God. I shall merely try to help God as best I can. And if I succeed in doing that, then I shall be of use to others as well. <laughs>